The Kenyan government has announced a deal with the United Arab Emirates that will see the country import oil and credit in order to ease its dollar-related woes. The deal calls for the UAE to supply oil and credit to Kenya for a period of one year, some in some quarters six months, with the option to extend the agreement for another additional year. Under this agreement, the UAE will provide a total of 500,000 metric tons of fuel valued at 400 million US dollars. The imports, which will come through a credit of between six months and a year, are expected to ease a crisis in the forex market, given that oil shipments account for 28% of Kenyan's monthly imports and mitigate the effects of the Kenyan shilling that had weakened to a record low of 108.6 against the dollar in June, its lowest level since it was introduced in 1993. The deal with the UAE will help to ease some of the pressure on the Kenyan shilling and reduce the current account deficit, both of which will be beneficial to the, current, uh, to the country's long-term economic stability. And this arrangement is not without its skirmishes, though our stakeholders are particular about who will benefit more the possibility of a parallel shadow market influence on already inflated pump price, while it might not even really address the foreign exchange scarcity in the country. So from Nairobi, Kenya, I'm being joined by I'm being joined by Ali Khan Sachu, an Africa Jew economist and a macro analyst. He's also the CEO of uh, Reach Management. Thank you so much, um, Ali Khan, for joining us. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Now, at what point uh, did the Kenyan government deem it fit to start importing fuel on credit from the UAE? So, you know, the government has been looking at ways to um, take the pressure off the foreign exchange reserve um, fuel is the single biggest expense item on a monthly basis for the government of Kenya. Um, and they've been uh, looking around for uh, solutions uh, to uh, defray the pressure. And uh, I think they were looking at this a few months ago. There were, there were discussions that they would reach out to Saudi Arabia, but clearly the UAE is the source of our imports and therefore they've gone to the UAE to get this uh, uh, credit line. Um, I, I think, you know, there is an enormous amount of pressure on the Kenya shilling at the moment, um, and this is probably a, a, a temporary Band-Aid solution rather than a long-term solution to the problem. That movie said uh, was meant to actually ease um, the scarcity, the dollar scarcity in the country, and of course address the issue of the Kenyan shilling that is losing value. But then, how possibly possible is the feel on credit going to ease the pressure on the dollar demand when there is no assurance it won't negatively affect local pump prices? So, look, uh, uh, you know, our, our pump prices uh, have been high, they reflect a tax rate, which is nearly 100% on the fuel price. It's an important revenue stream for the government anyway. Um, so I didn't see any relaxation in the pump price. I frankly don't see much easing of pressure on the shilling. Um, I estimate the shortfall in the Kenya system to be $4 billion. Um, and I think this is part of the potential solution, but not a silver bullet. So I expect the Kenya shilling to remain under pressure. Bear in mind, we have a little bit of a two-tier FX system now in the sense that the official rate is very is practically impossible to transact that. And there is currently a, a, a premium on that official rate of about 8 to 9% um, uh, in, in the market. But then uh, some are still concerned that the longer credit line could wipe out the benefits of buying diesel and petrol in large quantities. So don't you think this uh, is a major or maybe a genuine concern in a way? So, you know, the question is obviously, is the UAE giving a free loan? Is it or is, are there costs attached? We have not seen information around uh, that agreement. Um, I think in the context of the UAE and its geopolitical outreach program on the continent of Africa, I suspect it's going to be given on generous terms. But when you look at, the, you look at this in the overall scheme, it's a positive step, but it's not sufficient because the current shortfall is quite large. And unless we address that shortfall, um, and partly that speaking probably to the Chinese because we're making very large payments 
uh, of principle and interest to them right now is probably about getting a little bit more money out of the IMF and the World Bank, which is prob- which is possible because both multilaterals have been supporting Kenya through this difficult time. And I think it also requires some trimming of the government spending, which is something the government's promised, but so far has not done. So I think you've got to see this in the context of a total picture rather than a single event which is going to solve Kenya's uh, hard currency problem. Yeah, that's always been a question. How the Kenyan government hopes to pay um, for this credit it's hoping to get um, from the UAE. But then, are you saying that um, the Kenyan government is banking on the loan it is hoping to get from the IMF to pay for this oil? Or are you saying that the Kenyan government might be looking at some other sources by which it can generate the funds to pay for the oil it is hoping to get on credit? That's an interesting question. I think the Kenya government, as I said, has a shortfall of about $4 billion. And I think what the Kenya government is trying to do is to uh, defray as many uh, short-term payments further out and therefore get through this very difficult period. So, I mean, you know, the IMF and World Bank have been very supportive. I think the Kenya government's relying on extra support from them, whether that those loans pay these loans off is a, is, a, is a different matter. Government balance sheets tend not to work in that way. But I think overall, um, the government will be saying, look, you know, our, our situation isn't that bad. It's a temporary cash crunch. If you help us out now, is there going to be benefits later? And, uh, and I think the government is, is basically saying to itself, we've got to cover the $4 billion shortfall. This probably does half a billion or three quarters of a billion of that coverage, if we can cover the balance, which also probably involves partial redemption of the 2024 Eurobond and not a full redemption, that, that would also save some funds because that's a $2 billion redemption next year. Mm. All right. Now, this particular deal, when it comes on board and is ratified, do you think it will be a deal breaker uh, for local oil dealers who before now, uh, according to reports, have been monopolizing the benefits of economies of scale? You know, the local dealers have had a very tough time because the government was subsidizing fuel. And those subsidy payments were not being made on time. So what it meant is that large uh, 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 operators were able to handle this kind of pressure. But the small operators, which constitute, I believe, one-third of the petroleum industry, were unable to, to, to deal with this pressure on their balance sheet. So it's, uh, the current situation has favored the big majors I think with respect to the delay in the payment, it will not favor any one or the other. It, it, it will be transmitted as is through the system. But the problem in the system is what I've said, that subsidy payments have not been repaid on time, putting pressure on independent operators and advantaging those big operators with big balance sheets. Hmm. All right. Well, some officials in some quarters are a bit skeptical about the credit terms on local pump prices. You've mentioned something around that. Uh, they are saying that the objective of the deal is misplaced as it addresses forex crisis, but not the rising pump price. So what should be the priority here for the Kenyan government? So the Kenyan government is, is not able to address the pump price unless it reduces taxation. As I said, Taxation is very high on fuel in this economy, but it's a massive revenue stream for the government. So the only way to address uh, prices outside the market correcting and going lower is for the government to reduce the taxation rate on fuel products. They have not been keen to do this because they currently need all the cash they can get. So I don't think we're going to get any respite act at the pump for consumers, I think that pressure will continue. And I think prices, to me, the risks are to the upside because I think the oil price will start to firm up going forward through the end of the year.
All right, before I let you go, Ali Khan, uh, the Central Bank of uh, Kenya governor, that is Patrick Njoroge, insisted that Kenya has sufficient foreign currency to meet demands. So then, what is the real truth as regards this? Uh, because there is a speculation that the scarcity that is going on might result in the creation of a parallel shadow market. So we, do, we don't really understand what obtains. In some quarters, there's scarcity um, of forex. Uh, but the um, central bank um, governor is saying there is enough to go around. So where do we pick the line? Where do we peg it? So the, the central bank governor is, is obviously got a mandate and he's got to deliver that mandate. And one of those mandates is to maintain confidence in the economy and in the foreign exchange rate. Um, however, it is clear today... You want, you know, Kenya historically, you've been able to convert um, whatever amount of money you wanted into whatever foreign currency you required and the other way around. It's been one of the strengths of Kenya as being an open uh, economy and having that FX convertibility. But there is no doubt right now that there is a two-tier market that's exchanging uh, at the banks. The banks are quoting bid offer spreads, which are nearly 10%. That is not a normal scenario, and are rationing the amount of foreign currency you can purchase. And this is an unfortunate situation, which I don't think is going to be right size anytime soon. But I think the gov governor is husbanding um, his FX reserves because he is aware of the level of pressure um, that has been placed on those reserves. All right, thank you so much, um, Ali Khan, for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.